In this video, I'm going to show you how you can use Power Automate to quickly update a field for all of the items in a particular SharePoint list. So this is based on a real world scenario where I actually had a list um, that I'd imported from a CSV, an Excel spreadsheet, into a list. And actually, um, once we got going and we started using the data as part of uh, a solution, we realized actually there was a certain field value um, that needs to be updated on mass. Um, now, you could technically, if, if you only had, say, a couple of hundred rows, you could use the editing grid view. You could change the value like this, and then you could change it by pulling it down like this um very quickly um if you only had a handful of items but actually um i had loads uh, of items in there so actually it made sense that we automated that and we created a very quick power automate solution um that, that i knocked together and what ended up happening was we could use that to then go back through very quickly with the logic to say for example if uh location uh equals choice two then change that to choice three and then very quickly that went through and updated all of my items to achieve that so let's take a look at how we actually go about doing this so the first thing i'm going to do is navigate to office.com which is the home page of microsoft 365 um, if you're new to microsoft 365 um, and you've not logged in before um, it will obviously ask you for your email address and password the next thing I'm going to do is open up Power Automate. So if you've not used Power Automate before, I do have some videos which kind of explain this in a bit more detail. But Power Automate is essentially your workflow engine tool. So that's where you're going to go and build any automations, workflows. It can do things like automating notifications for reviews or building approval processes. Or you can just use them for like one-time automations, which is like what I'm doing today. So if I click on My Flows and then I click on New Flow um, and just Automated Cloud Flow, we don't need to give it a flow name, choose flow trigger right now. I actually just click on skip, uh, and that's going to get me into my Power Automate um, area. Now, with Power Automate, the way it works is that you need to have a trigger. You have to have something that starts it. Now, if we're just using this as a one-off, um, so we're just going to be using this manually every so often, the best thing to do is actually set this to be a manual trigger, uh, a flow. So this is just a flow button essentially and what that means is that we can just choose to run this via the test button across the top uh, and we don't need to do anything else so the next thing that i'm going to do is i need to get all of my items for my sharepoint list so if i click on next uh, step so inside of here instead of the connections i'm going to search for sharepoint uh, click on sharepoint in here um, and I should also pre-warn you, I'm going to do all this on the fly, by the way. I can't remember exactly the workflow steps I put together, so um, bear with me as I kind of work my way through this. But the first thing I'm, I need to do is actually get my items. So um, I'm going to look in here and search for get, and then I'm going to get items. So I'm going to get all of my uh, SharePoint list items. So I just need to search the, the, the name of my site, which this is actually built on my knowledge base site. So I'm hoping because it's one that we've used recently, there we go, uh, it's in here. The list name, I think it's just example list for this scenario. Um, and then show advanced options. Uh, what I would suggest you do in here is, um, it says included, sorry, it says limited, limit entries to folder, filter query, order by top count. That's what I'm after, top count. So total number of entries to retrieve. Now, if you're only doing this with a couple of hundred items, you probably should just be doing the manual way that I showed you. Stop being lazy. Um, but if you are doing this for a lot, and you're doing thousands of items, um, then what you tend to find with get items is that it sometimes just limits it to the first um, X amount that it finds, first 500 or, or something like that. So say for example, it was a thousand items. I know there's a thousand items in there. Say for example, there's 990. I would just say the top count is a thousand. And then I know that it's actually definitely pulling back a thousand items. Um, um, you can have a little play around with that. If you've got a lot more items, you should probably go through and just sort of have a little play around um, just to make sure that you're pulling through the items that you uh, are expecting to have in there. And actually, something that I also do as well um, is I like to use a lot of variables inside of um, my workflows so I can print out what I'm seeing inside of my workflow as it's kind of working through. Um, so I'm going to initialize a variable and I'm just going to call this, say, var. Um, uh, well, actually, I'll call it var count because I'm going to use this to count my items later. 
and I'll set this to be an integer and it's going to starting value is just going to be blank for now another little top tip as well is I like to just update this with the name of my variable um, this isn't going to be a very large workflow but just it's good practice I always think if you just put in uh, what the name of the variable is that you're initializing um, just so in the future if someone else came to look at this workflow that they, they can quickly break it down so then I'm going to do uh, I need to add my condition so the next step is a control and it will be a condition because what I want to do is I want to say okay um, for, for basically for each of these items in here now if I was just adding the value here you'll notice it'll automatically uh, well it should have um, Maybe I need to do more than this, but it should automatically wrap this in a uh, for each. So instead, I'm just going to just make sure I put in a uh, for each control. Sorry, apply to each, it's called. And I'm going to add in my value into here. So I'm just going to add in uh, the, from the get items, I'm adding value. So basically what I'm doing is I'm saying for each of the uh, items that you find in this list, um, apply this logic so I'm going to apply my condition to every item that it finds that it pulls back in this list so this is now where I'm going to say okay um, choose a value so what I'm going to do is I'm going to base this on my location field so it's my location value and I'm going to say um, that it does it contain so if it contains choice two then what I wanted to do is I want to update the item so back into here, I'm going to look for SharePoint uh, as a connector, and then I'm going to use the update item action. Again, I just need to set the list that it's for, example list, and then under ID, you can just see here, get items ID, uh, and that's basically the, the current item of this. So then from here, I would set the location values. So let's say, uh, we're going to set this to choice three. And um, the other thing I want to do as well is I'm going to increment the um, var count, the variable. So if I put this and say um, increment, so increment variable, and I'm going to increment my var count by one. The reason being is... Um, say for example if you did have hundreds or thousands of items that was in in here and you knew those thousands it's a great way of debugging is to be able to actually print out that increment variable at the end so that you can see um what the total count was uh, that it got to and in fact you might want to even do something like send yourself an email with um the the, the increment variable at the end so that you know um at the very end of this so let's just close this down uh, so uh, I'll say send email, um, and I'll say send this to. Um, blah, 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 just put in. Uh, let's just put in my email address. Da, 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 da. Uh, subject, we'll just say that this is um, uh, test complete. And then in the body, I'm going to say total items updated. And that's where I'm going to use my variable down here. Whatever that is. Da, 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 da. showing up I tell you what let's do one extra step um, let's initialize a variable and what I'm going to use so this will be my var total string I can make that an integer as well again I'm just going to update this just so I know what that is and then in my email I should now see so I missed one more step. Um, it is making sure that I actually set the variable. So set variable. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set my um, var total to equal 
the var count. So now, still not showing up. Why is that still not showing up? Um, so, realize what it is. Um, I need to set the var integer to be var string, um, and then that will then appear. So var total. So there we go. Um, so now I've got that, I can actually either use it from the email that it sends me or I'll be able to read it because it'll be printed out inside of the workflow. I'll give my workflow a name, so I'm going to say update SharePoint list items. And then I'm just going to check the condition. So it was when it contains choice 2, it's going to set it to be choice 3. So all of those are choice 2. So now if I click on save... It's uh, saying that title is a required field, so I just need to actually just pass back in the title of itself because I need to actually update that. So I click on save. Obviously, this is completely live as I'm recording this, so you're getting all the error messages. Uh, but you're seeing how I'm fixing them, which is a good thing. So then I click on manual, click on test. This is then going to say, sure, you want to run this, because so I make sure my connectors are in place. Then I click on continue and run flow, which is then going to start running my flow. I then click on done. And then, there we go, it's already started. It's got all my items that I needed to. It's set up my uh, variables and the variable var total of type string. Let me initialize what it's doing, value returns. Uh, total only supports value of type string. Um, that makes sense because it's trying to set um, a variable. Um, so instead, um, let's let's just change var total uh, to be an integer. Add a var count. Okay, let's try that again. Click on run flow. There we go, and that's worked. And now you can see the total var is zero and why is that let's wonder so has it updated yes it's ever updates everything to choice three so why is that put far total to zero So let's just go back and then let's just edit our data and just make sure that this is working as expected. So let's just put this back to choice two, basic grid, and then let's run this workflow again. I think we may have just tripped over our own test data. Come run flow. Everything's set to choice two currently. There we go. Refreshing it, you can see it changes to choice three. Still the var total. Ah, so it's a nine now. So it's found it. So it's fine. I think it was just the, the workflow before tripped over itself. It's obviously updated um, everything the first time, and then the second time it didn't update anything. So that's why the flow run didn't work. Um, so as a quick run through again of how this workflow has been set up, we've got a manual trigger across the top. Uh, we then got get items. This is getting all of our SharePoint items from the SharePoint list. Um, as well, make sure that you are um, making sure that you're getting all the data. And in fact, um, there's no harm as well in uh, maybe adding another variable um, to do like a count. So you could have an apply to each loop um, that, that um, is counting 
each of these items and then you could post into a variable to say how many items is actually found and then you could do a separate apply to each of all the ones that is actually processed so you could then easily work out whether you're getting enough items inside of your processing loop um, so again we've started off with a manual trigger we've got all our sharepoint list items we're initializing a variable var count which is what we use inside of our, our loop to count we then got a var total we're initializing which is what we use to set the, the var count outside of the loop so we can see uh, that that particular number and then in our apply to each so they're applying to each of the each of the items that we get from our sharepoint list we're then um, saying a condition to say if that our particular field is equal to something so in my case it's if the location field is equal to choice two then if it is i want you to update the item to actually set it to be choice three instead and then what i'm doing after that is i'm also using the increment variable to add one to the var count um, and then at the end i'm setting my var uh, total variable to equal what the var count is so that i've printed it at the end so i don't have to skip through each of these increment variables to calculate it it just tells me at the end what that equals to you could also add a little email at the end as well if you wanted to to, to let you know that it's been complete and what the total amount of items were um, that they've actually been processed i hope you found that useful um, I know it's a bit of a clunky, bumpy way uh, of going through through, through it to, to watch me sort of um, trip over things, but that's just the way things go when you're building Microsoft solutions. You will just find error messages, you will find things um, that don't work, and it's just about working through them and figuring it out. Obviously, I fell into a bit of an issue with my, my test data, um, but actually then setting the test data back to what it was expecting and then testing it and running it through again, the workflow was as perfect as expected. So. If you enjoyed the video, please like, subscribe. If you've got any questions or comments or if you've used this yourself on, on certain things, let me know in the comments feed below. Um, and thank you very much for your time watching this video today.